Perspectivas Latinas, a community service of CAN TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Since 1997, Poder Learning Center has been working to respond to the educational needs of adult Latino immigrants in the areas of Pilsen, Little Village, and Back of the Yards. Our guests, Griselda Piedra, Yelitza Valbuena, and Aurelia Lemus, are here to talk about their work. Welcome to all of you. Hi, Juan Carlos. Thank you for having us here. Great. Let's start off by um, talking about what you do at, at Poder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the supervisor for Oprima Uno, mm -hmm. and I'm also the level two ESL instructor for Poder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long have you been there? I started in 2001 um, as a volunteer, became a teacher assistant, and about three years ago started working full time as an ESL instructor. So it sounds like they have you now. Like you're yes. Never, <laughs> you're never going to leave. Yes. Uh, Yelitza, how long have you been working uh, at uh, Poder? At uh, Poder, um, one year. One year. Mm -hmm. And I'm a student. Too. Oh, you're a student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're a student and you're working there? Yes. A student work. Mm -hmm. You didn't start as a volunteer? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, Aurelia, please. Tell us how long you've uh, been working for Poder and what you do there. I've been working there for one year, mm -hmm. and I started as a student. As a student I, as well? I, yes. I started in the third level, and uh, finally this um, December, this past December, I graduated from the fifth level. And I'm, yes, right now I'm working. Okay, wow. So let's talk about um, the history of Poder. Uh, how that organization comes came to be and what its main uh, work is. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, well, Poder started in 1997. Mm -hmm. um, it started really small. I believe it was with six students in the basement of St. Procopius. So um, where is St. Procopius? St. Procopius is in Pilsen. So on, it's a church? It's a church, mm -hmm. yes. It's on 16th, between 16th and 18th Street um, on Allport. Mm -hmm. So it started really small, just six students um, in the basement again. And it eventually grew. Um, mm -hmm. Right now at this moment, we currently have a little bit over 100 students enrolled in our English as a Second Language classes. Um, both Aurelia and Yelitsa have been taking our classes uh, for the past year. Um, they were my students at one mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. I was uh, the level four instructor. Um, just switched now to the level two role um, this past course. Uh, Poder, again, um, works to you know empower our students to mm -hmm. be able to continue their education by pursuing the uh, GED as well as US uh, the citizenship mm -hmm. um, also to help them have communication with um, their children and also um, th their children's teachers so we try to help them out in that way that sounds um, awesome uh, we'll definitely come back to some of those <laughs> points but I'm interested um, she was your teacher mm -hmm. yes yes uh, and um, now you're working with her. Um, why did you come to Poder and um, what has made you stay, uh, Yelitsa? Or did, did you find a home there, a lot of support? Um, obviously, when some, uh, I think of my parents and when they went through English classes, um, they didn't say, well, I'm going to stay here and, and work. Um, you know, they, they got what they could and they, they kept on with their lives. Why go somewhere and stay? Yeah, well, um I like very much Poder. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like a home mm -hmm. because uh, there are many volunteers mm -hmm. and they help us to learn English. And every day uh, when you need help, mm -hmm. you ask uh, to the volunteer or the teacher and they, they uh, are here for, for us. And I... I know I know about Poder for TV program and uh, Telemundo. Okay. And and you learned about it, and you said I'm, I have to go there. You said it feels like home, and because of all these volunteers, what do they do that makes it feel like home? Because they are very friendly, mm -hmm. and it's I don't know what. <laughs> how to tell me as best as, tell me as best as you can. Yes. Maybe it's because of the the place is, is mm, small, mm -hmm. and everybody knows the others, mm -hmm. and it's easy to to feel at, at home. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question or a concern, 
um, you don't have to call. You could just go see someone. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. that's part of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And tell me about your experience, Aurelia. Well, um, I came to America and I have dreams. How long I ago did begin. you come? I've been here for 16 years. 16 years. But um, my my max, maximum dream is to become a nurse. A nurse. And um, I have a child, and mm -hmm. I start living life. But I always pray to God to have a place where I can feel comfortable mm -hmm. and have enough opportunity to grow. It's mm -hmm. a woman, mm -hmm. it's a person, and it's somebody who can understand this new language. Mm -hmm. So I learn a lot of English in the street, but mm -hmm. they teach me basics here. And mm -hmm. they give me an opportunity to work. Mm -hmm. and, and something that I know how to do. And um, what I know how to do is to be a customer service, mm -hmm. to help others. Mm -hmm. And I feel very comfortable there. And um, the volunteers, like she say, um, they help you a lot. They see you as somebody who's smart. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us is Latin Americans. We study in our, in our country. Mm -hmm. Right. But we have to take, because of necessity, we have to take any job. Mm -hmm. Because we need to support our families. Mm -hmm. And um, now when we're here, and Poder gives us the opportunity to become successful. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm and to help our children, to show them proudly, mm -hmm. we're smart. Okay, um, you, you bring a good point. It's um, a lot of individuals that come from, from Latin America um, are educated, or even if they weren't educated, there is a lot of intelligence, right? Even if they're not formally mm -hmm. educated. Um, and yet they arrive here like, like I think uh, you said, and um, in my, certainly in my family I've seen that, you take any job because the question is surviving, but obviously you have bigger dreams of just more than just surviving. And through Paul, that you found a lot of that, and you now you're working. What do you? How do you work in in Paul? That how you've become um, went through that transformation from like a student, uh, client, and student to now worker. What do you both do? So let me explain mm -hmm. a little bit. Both sure. um, Aurelia and Yelitsa mm -hmm. um, are part of our Prima Uno program. What um, is that? So Prima Uno um, That's was like uh, press one. Right. When, I, when I hear it so in press Spanish. One. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically when, you know, if you mm -hmm. call, let's say your cable company, mm -hmm. um, they always say press one for Spanish. So then mm -hmm. we took that o Prima Uno um, and <laughs> made it into a customer service training program. Okay. So we take our own students, our own ESL students, um, and train them, give them an extensive training mm -hmm. in customer service. We um, have our own call center, so we transformed one of our classrooms into a call center, and um, you know, equip one, equip them with all the material that they need, so that they can answer phone calls, um, you know, talk face to face with other organizations about poder, um, mm -hmm. about them, and we give them the tools to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and then through this program, it's about a 12 month program. Um, towards the end, we focus on interviewing, resume building, and then we assist them in finding full-time positions. So with us, it's, it's a program where they're mm -hmm. with us and we, we um, give them a part-time position. Um, and they can do anything within um, answering phone calls, mm -hmm. um, being our reception, uh, our receptionist at Poder as well. Um, and we empower them to do uh, more things than they're, they're used to do. We give them that opportunity to, to go out and grow, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's, um, so this was something you, you saw a need in the, in the industry, and you said we're going to respond to that need? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We were seeing that a lot of our um, students were having a hard time assisting our classes due to work, work um, schedules being changed constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of them had really hard, um, you know, employments um, where family to take care of as well, and family to take care of exactly. Mm -hmm. um, their their job responsibilities require um, physical labor, extensive physical labor, um, and for some reason right now, a prima una is basically all female. Um, our training is about three to four weeks long, and when we do get a male in. Um, 
for some reason, I'm not trying to say that males <laughs> are, can't withstand our training because that's not true. They do, but somehow they, they see that it's not fit for them for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, it could be health related. It could be, um, you know, I, I can't provide that nourishing um, mm -hmm. assistance that, that um, these women are giving to everybody that comes in through, through our doors. Um, and I think it comes more natural, right, for, for our female students. Um, so at this moment, we have um, 11, 12, I'm sorry, 12, 12 female advocates. Um, and we're, we've placed seven, seven yeah. advocates as well, all female. Um, in you place them with companies from around the area? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with companies, which range between uh, receptionist positions to actual um, managers also. So our, our placements range. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you, um, I'm a little confused. You said it's a 12-month process, and then you said the training is three to four weeks? Yes, so okay. the, the training for customer mm -hmm. service is about three to four weeks, and then through the rest of, of the time between the training and the end of the program, they're um, you know working with us with several contracts, um, whether it be answering the phone calls, working as reception. We're giving them those skills, enhancing those skills, so that by the time they're ready to go out into the workforce, um, they have those skills, and they're very um, strong, right? Mm -hmm. And we can promote them and we can go to the employer and say, we've worked really hard with these students, give them an opportunity, and they're very open to it. So this is, uh, these are paid positions within the organization? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's say, um, well, Yelitsa, how, you went through this entire 12 month and process and, and then you went um, through the three to four week customer service uh, preparation? Yes. You um, Tell us about that experience. Um, how you felt you grew and, and what you learned and, and uh, um, what you might think that it would offer for other people? When um, I started in uh, level three, now mm -hmm. I'm in level okay, five. We're, we're gonna talk about the levels in a bit because then, yeah, that's um, something that we haven't touched on. It's difficult for me because uh, I don't speak English at home and all my friends speak in Spanish and now I feel more confident to speak English. Uh, I know I, I have to practice more and more and more because I, have to, I want to speak fluently in, in, in Oprima and Poder. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned more and I feel very good now. Mm -hmm. and I learned about customer service, I learned about a receptionist, uh, many, many things. Were there ever moments where you're like, ah, this isn't for me, and they came back and encouraged you, or this is just too difficult, or was there anything like that? <laughs> uh, no, not, not too difficult, but. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm curious, uh, because they've mentioned um, both Aurelia and, and Yelitsa have mentioned levels, level three and different levels, and mm -hmm. you yourself, you said you worked with different levels. Tell mm -hmm. me about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, our English classes are based off of six different levels. We go from introduction to um, English all the way to our level five, which deals more with conversation. Um, levels intro through level uh, four are more grammatical. Um, our so classes, tell me about the levels in detail, level Mm -hmm. Intro level one, two, three, four, just for, okay. for our viewers. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have um, our introduction to English uh, focuses on the foundation of uh, to be. Um, and we started off, we start them off really slow in verb tenses. So in the past, in the simple present. Um, when they move on to level one, they already have that strong foundation, which makes it a lot easier for them to learn and acquire the, the English language as they move up each level. Um, our levels run, well, basically our courses run anywhere between 12 to 15 weeks. Um, our classes are Monday through Thursday, with the exception of Oprima Uno, where they have to take classes Monday through Friday. Um, class times at this moment are, is from 10.30 to 12.30. Uh, so they're two hours long, one hour with the teacher, one hour in the computers. We have um, software that also allows them to keep practicing um, what they've learned in the classroom um, by working on um, 
May it be internet activities, may it be um, more listening through, through YouTube. We try to use different types of, of methods to teach them the language. Um, mm -hmm. We try to, to stay away from just read this example in the book and write it on your paper. Right. We try to do a lot of dictation, uh, pronunciation, one-on-one -on -one tutoring with volunteers, and again, internet activities that they can also practice at home. Okay, and uh, Aurelia, um, you entered at what level? Do you enter at level three? At level three, yes. And tell us about that experience, how um, you knew your, your, um, your English had improved and you were more confident um, with the English you were speaking. Because you said the English you learned when you first came was on the street, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you, um, you obviously speak it and sp speak it very well and it got you along. But what did you experience at Poder that helped you grow even more? Well, um, I do not have uh, rules in the English, which is a lot of them. <laughs> and okay. I speak in only one tense. Okay. And this is a big difference, you know, mm -hmm. because people understand you, but mm -hmm. you see you as like, okay, she just somebody who come from another place mm -hmm. trying to be well. Mm -hmm. But when you start in Poder, they even teach you um, simple things like um, how to make a joke, how to understand a joke. <laughs> really? Things so on a daily, daily basis. They, mm -hmm. For us, make us look more confident mm -hmm. than who um, we are. And um, a lot of times, people take you as like, maybe you're not educated or you don't know what mm -hmm. they're talking about. But or, you, or you're not too intelligent? Thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you start learning, and then it make you grow even in reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you don't know what you read about. Mm. Maybe you're trying to understand, but you don't really complete get the idea. But in Poder, they, they enforce you to, to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not a magic trick. It's it has to be <laughs> an effort from you. Mm. You have to put your own time. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how you, um, I want to get to that joke or how <laughs> they help you with jokes because that is something very cultural. It's not just um, getting a joke, but it's understanding the language in many ways. But. Um, you said it's a lot of effort from your part. And you said you, you have um, a son or a child to take yes. care of. Um, how did you handle that? And how did the people at Poder help you balance that life and make, give you the ability to put in the effort to raise your family while still growing as a person yourself? I believe that we is a Hispanic or Latinos, mm -hmm. um, we have a family base mm -hmm. culture. Um, we are very close with our children, but when when you start in English, mm -hmm. many, many times you're trying to imitate the English culture, which is not wrong, but we have to learn to not lose what who we are. Okay. And uh, it helped you because they encourage you to go to pick up the children uh, time card or mm -hmm. they notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go and you try to speak with the person and sometimes the teacher don't speak in Spanish mm -hmm. and don't understand you the way that you speak. Okay. And uh, they encourage you, go and ask questions, write it down trying to do your best and uh, go to the museum with the children. Spend time with them mm -hmm. because for children, this is something very important. Time is love. Mm -hmm. And they're helping you not just um, learn English, but also remember, like you said, I think very beautifully, um, remember who you are and what you bring uh, as part of being that person. And being proud of it. Mm -hmm. Because many, many times we just want to, okay, we are from this. No. We, we get embarrassed or ashamed, uh, some of us, unfortunately. Yes, some mm -hmm. of us, we do. Mm 
and uh, they they help you to be proud of who you are. Well, that's a very well said. Um, I'm curious. Uh, you, you you work in Pilsen, mm -hmm. um, but um, also in Little Village, right? You are you bring in people from Little Village yes. mm -hmm. and from back of the yards as well. Mm -hmm. um, you're not the only organization in in that area. Who do you team up with? Um, who supports your efforts, um, and who do you support in in this work at Poder? Well, um, we basically, um, you know, provide uh, assistance with um, Instituto del Progreso Latino. Mm -hmm. um, we also Universidad Popular. We all work together um, because, again, it's not. You know, it, it's not like we're going after their students or they're going after <laughs> our students. We we all have the same mission to mm -hmm. empower our students to be able to um, have them learn the language as soon as possible and and be able to speak it properly so that they can go on with their lives and help their children, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and a lot of the times uh, we we say a lot family, right? We we always um, emphasize on on the family. Um, and by being able to acquire the language, then they're, they're able to provide uh, better opportunities for their families. So um, there really isn't any, um, what I would say, uh, negativity between any of the organizations in, in, mm -hmm. in the Pilsen and Little Village, back of the yards area. Um, we all work together, um, mm -hmm. which is something nice. If, if we don't have room for a student, we refer them to other organizations and mm -hmm vice versa, which is really nice. It's nice to have that support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that is, uh, because I, I, I do see that, um, and you know, it's part of my job to, to speak to um, individuals from all these organizations, mm -hmm. and I, I do get that sense of this camaraderie and, and working together for, for the better of our, our community. Um, which reminds me I th um, of some of the research I did um, and this is, I guess, related to, this is your work. Um, I saw in one of your newsletters that uh, you even extended some work into Mexico. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that and um, how, how did that work? So what we did mm -hmm. is uh, we had a pilot uh, program down mm -hmm. in Guanajuato where um, two of our um, teachers went down there for, I believe it was a month, anywhere between a month, two months, um, and they did one of our courses to see how, how um, beneficial it would be down there. How would, it, um, how would this town work with this program? Mm -hmm. um, what tools can we take to allow them to learn the language? Um, it was mm -hmm. pretty intense due mm -hmm. to the fact that the town um, where um, our, our teachers went uh, really was lacking in a lot of uh, materials. Um, such as? Such as computers, um, internet access. We had to facilitate all of that for the town to be able to even start with the program. Mm -hmm. And it was very well um, received. I, I, if we had um, anywhere between 10 to 15 students, um, but again, it was a really small classroom, um, very limited with resources. So we had to figure out how can we send them pencils? How can we send them a, a whiteboard or even a blackboard? Um, how can we send them Wow. all the materials that they needed. Um, we, we, it didn't come to our minds that we needed to provide all of that. And um, before you, uh, once you were down there and working and you learned of all this need, you gathered up stuff here or you asked for help from corporations or how did that work? Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the items came from, from here. Mm -hmm. um, we asked uh, organizations, um, corporations in um, the Chicagoland area, and we we were able to provide that material mm -hmm. to the town. Um, it, it also seemed um, that they had a really hard time with potable water, so then we had to work with them to give them that, you know, meet their necessities first um, that were mm -hmm. more crucial mm -hmm. um, so that they can be more um, at ease mm -hmm. and more comfortable in our classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there any plans that to do this again or move into other areas of Latin America? At this moment, um, I'm not quite sure if mm -hmm. there is. I believe there was a thought of uh, mention of it, but I, I wouldn't be able to uh, really pinpoint 
um, if um, this is something that will continue. Um, I know that we were able to locate um, instructors in the area that were able to continue on with our work mm -hmm. um, down in Guanajuato. Um, but as in expanding in other areas, I'm not, um, I'm not sure about that at this moment, yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. we're, we're running out of time, but um, I just have one really, one more question. Mm -hmm. Um, please tell me what um, Poder has uh, meant for you in a couple of words or in, in a short phrase. Uh, we'll start with uh, Aurelia, please. An opportunity. An opportunity. Okay. Mm. Elisa, what has uh, Poder meant for you? Um, opportunity and learn mm -hmm. and Confident. Confidence. More confident. Well, those are mm -hmm. three great words. And for you? Um, empowerment. Empowerment. Right. Empowerment both for the staff and for our students. Um, confidence as well, right? Mm -hmm. Growth. And growth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, well, here's to continuing growth of Poder and all that you do. Thank you. Thanks for coming today and um, sharing Thank your you. stories and so much great information. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come to the show. Perspectivas Latinas is a community service of CAN TV. If your nonprofit would like to work with CAN TV, call 312 738 1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Perspectivas Latinas for local issues and concerns every Thursday at 8 30 p.m. on CAN TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us.